Hey everybody, it's me, your old pal Dan Classic, and we're back with another episode, and today we're talking about Mego. What's a Mego? Only one of the most important toy companies of all time. Ah, uh, come on, Gorilla. That sounds made up. Some Mexican toy company I never heard of is as important as Mattel and Hasbro. Even more so. And who said it was a Mexican toy company? Fine. Spanish company. You sure picked up the East Coast slang pretty quick, Gorilla. I still don't get it. It's an American toy company as far as I know. Uh, why would you think it was Mexican? The name, you stupid gringo. Amigo. Oh, it's Migo! That's what I said. Amigo. M E G O. Mego? What are these, some bootleg Lego blocks? <sighs> Raz Holly, hit the music! Never hear from the radio. The 1970s, a decade that saw the end of the Vietnam conflict, the beginning of hip hop and heavy metal music, and saw a tiny toy company that had only previously produced dime store toys become one of the big boys in the toy industry. Outselling Hasbro and Mattel, laying the groundwork for generations of figures to follow, only to be brought down by the charismatic air that brought them to their greatest heights in the first place. The Mego Toy Company started in 1954, importing cheap dime store toys until rising costs forced the company to change gears. In 1971, David and Madeline Abrams, who had founded Mego, named their son Marty president of the company. Production was shifted to dolls, but not baby dolls or fashion dolls. These would be more akin to G.I. Joe action figures with interchangeable bodies that could be given different heads and clothes to depict different characters. And that was the key. These weren't just random who gives a shit soldiers and tough guys with no backstory or fan base. These were licensed characters from comics, movies, and TV shows. And every time you looked, it seemed like more and more characters would be added. Marvel. DC, Star Trek, Wizard of Oz, and the list goes on and on. If it was relatively popular in the 1970s or early 80s, there's a good chance that Mego produced 8-inch clothed figures for it. Hundreds of different figures were produced in the ensuing decade, as well as 3 and 3 quarter inch figures and other shit, but right now we're focusing on 8-inch clothed figures. I've been lucky enough to grab a few of these, so let's check them out. All right, let's start it off with Bo Duke. Um, mine, uh, the collar is a little messed up, but I did get him for a pretty good price. Interesting story about this. I bought this online. This is what the pictures looked like. The guy didn't lie about the shirt being a little messed up. That's fine, I don't care. He's got his boots and everything. They showed it with all the clothes on, showed his marks and everything like that. Show he's legit, he's not a bootleg, he's not a repro. And then I ordered him. He came in the mail, no clothes, naked in a bag with his clothes loose in the same bag. Um, it was really creepy and it was, you know, one of my first times buying a Mego figure online. So maybe that's something that people do. Um, but yeah, it was really, really creepy um, to get this naked man doll in the, in the mail and open it up. Um, yeah, it was a little odd. So but maybe that's, maybe that's something you guys are into in the Mego community. I don't know. I'm a new guy. Ah, ah, it's Frank and Luke. Um, so after a while, sometimes Mego figures get this weird zombie thing going on. 
Um, the plastic that made for the bodies is different than the ones for the head. And so the heads sometimes get this weird look. Let's see if we can get a little better shot of that. So for comparison, let's bring in a Bow Duke. And I don't know if this necessarily has anything to do with being kept in the box. Um, if it is, this is what you get, booger eaters, when you leave your shit in the box. You get zombie fucking Luke Duke. Ah, ah, ah. But yeah, the plastic on the body is different from that of the plastic on the head, and the stuff deteriorates over time. There's stuff called Mego, Mego, I'm sorry, Mego Melt, or Mego Molt. I don't know if that's what this is. Um, some people fix this with some sort of spray thing that that the red color leaches back into the uh, the plastic and uh, ends up making it look a little bit better. Um, yeah, yeah, this is uh, it's kind of weird looking with the with the gray head. But let's take a look uh, at his outfit. It's pretty good. He's got a little belt. He's got his boots. Um, got his little shirt. This is his outfit. This is like the iconic outfit. These Mego figures are great. They pose really good. Um, of course, his joints are super stiff because he's never been opened or handled before. And that's what I like. I like fresh stuff. I don't like handling crap that people have been doing God knows what with for a million years. I like fresh toys. Um, and so let's move on to Daisy Duke. Um, they come with a little plastic thing around their face. It's kind of weird looking, um, but uh, it's to keep the hair in place because it can get a little wild if you haven't already noticed. Now, this is a very cool um, likeness of, of the character. Um, it looks like who it's supposed to be. I know the bodies are generic bodies, um, but the body looks really cool. And look at the little details. The, uh, the shoes are actually separate little shoes. Everything is like sculpted. All these nice little details on the, on everything is sculpted. The hands are sculpted. The little the fingernails, the little wrinkles in between the knuckles are are sculpted. It's these are very well made figures. So remember that when we start looking at the 2018 Migos, how nice and how awesome these figures were. And finally, Boss Hog. Um, yeah, I bought this for too much money, um, and this is how it came. Naked, in a bag, with his clothes. Um, it's like a fucking murder scene. I really bought it for parts and to see, it, I mean, because he, he has broken knees or something like that. Um, I bought it for parts because if I was going to, I hadn't got a boss hog yet, and I was going to use the clothes if I happened to need a hat, because there's a hat in there. Um, but these, the, the, the eight inch line are actually fairly common. You find these things all over the place. Let's take a look at McCoy here. Um, I have a few more of the Star Trek figures, but I just kind of want to start with my favorite character here, McCoy. Um, we'll get to these Star Trek figures in a later episode, um, but I just wanted to show you um, kind of what they look like and what they come with. And as you can see, they have pretty high quality uniforms here. Mine's a little dirty. I've tried to clean it with uh, OxyClean. You can actually wash these clothes. You can put them in a little fabric bag and uh, wash them in the washer or whatever, uh, but whatever. Let's take a look. He's got his little belt with a communicator and a phaser. Um, these are actually original, they're not repros, which is pretty cool. Um, these decals eventually do uh, fall off of the shirt. Um, mine looks okay. Uh, he's got his little uh, uh, rank right here on his, on his shirt. Um, very cool figure, very good likeness of who it's supposed to be. I mean, there is no mistaking who this is supposed to be. The level of quality on these original ones is, is just out of control. Um, when you look at stuff we have now and when they are using on modern action figures, using uh, uh, real scan technology and things of that nature, and they can't even get close to stuff like this. Got some superheroes here. Let's start with Spider-Man. He's one you're gonna see online from time to time. I think mine doesn't have uh, the right costume on because it seems small. He doesn't fit in it and he's bursting out of the seams of the thing. All in all, not a 
not broken, um, so there's that. Um, but getting a, uh, a a little costume that fits him has been a pain in my ass ever since I did get him. I got him on kind of a bargain, and um, yeah, great posable Spider-Man figure with a real cloth outfit. Um, very cool figure. These go for pretty big bucks online um, when you do see them. Um, you know, I mean, like, I, I, I can't really, you know, the, the sculpt is pretty simple, but it, what else do you want from it? It looks like Spider-Man, so there you go. Of the Marvel figures, one of my favorite ones is this, the Hulk. I mean, look at that face sculpt. Look at the iconic, you know, Hulk look. That's what the Hulk looks like to me when I imagine him. And, and they could not have done a better job with this. I have a repro shorts on this one this one came nude and um as some of them do <laughs> when you get them <laughs> when you buy them online i have no idea what that's about um but yeah here's the hulk he's very cool um one problem i do have with the hulk um he's a wee bit small i don't know why they made the hulk so he's like a mini hulk compared to the rest of the mego line even the marvel figures so Finally, as far as our vintage superheroes go, is Batman. Um, he's super incomplete. He is missing his uh, decal, and he actually has a fucked up knee. Um, the joints on these, after a while, do tend to uh, to break, um, especially the knees. Um, they will. There's a little screw that goes right through them, and um, if that if that breaks off, that's it. That's a wrap on the knee. You can kind of like squeeze it together and, and him having this leotard sort of keeps everything um, all locked up. But let's take a look at his face. Um, yeah, it's Batman, you know, like, and he's got this you know, like sort of swishy fabric cape. Um, he would have a Batman logo decal there, the emblem. Um, but all in all, I mean, it's a very cool figure, a, a clothed figure, has little boots. Um, when I was a little kid, I had Superman's boots for some reason, but I never had the Superman figure. Maybe I did at one point and I broke it, but I was really, really young, and these things were long gone by the time um, I was getting toys. So, <laughs> but, but yeah, here's Batman. Uh, and if you thought the Star Trek figures came with a lot of accessories, dude, this Conan the Barbarian has so much crap. Doesn't that really have a lot of real clothes to speak of? He has this furry underwear that he's got on, but he's got a uh, he's he's got a scabbard here for his sword. He's got an axe. He's got his belt. He's got his uh, arm gauntlet things. He's got boots. Um, he has real hair. And he has this look on his face like, I'm so mad. Um, mine's a little fucked up, but very sought after, very cool Amigo figure. And mine is in, he's a little fucked up, but in pretty good shape. I believe my sword is a repro. Um, and my I know my ax is a repro. Um, the sword could go either way. Um, it does have a little notch in the handle. I don't know if that's to help him hold it um, or if that's to, to mark it as a uh, as a repro. But yeah, all in all, very cool. I'm very pleased with this with this Conan figure. In a few short years, Migo went from relative unknown to industry powerhouse. Mego proved the theory that licensed action figures based on popular media could be very profitable. By the early 80s though, through a confluence of reasons and legal entanglements, Mego was no longer the industry powerhouse it once was. In my opinion, it all started when Abrams had been in Japan attempting to acquire what would become Micronauts when 20th Century Fox came knocking to produce Star Wars toys. Because of this, lesser-known Kenner picked up the license and produced the cheapest toys possible in the shortest amount of time. Star Wars' popularity as a brand and Kenner's willingness to produce gazillions of different figures meant that the 3 and 3 quarter inch figure would become the industry standard and the high-quality 8-inch clothed figures that actually looked like who they were supposed to be fell out of fashion for consumers. Micronauts would be a success, 
but it wasn't long before legal troubles, a couple of ill-advised licensing decisions, and Big Boy's Hasbro and Mattel finally hitting their stride pushed Mego into Chapter 11 and into toy industry infamy. In 2018, Mego had kind of a revival with a brand new line of 8-inch figures. Some of them are great, others, well, we're going to talk about those too. That's right, and over the next couple of weeks, we'll be looking at some new Mego figures and then comparing the new Mego figures to their 1970s counterparts. What's with the dolls, Gorilla? I thought we were looking at blocks. Not blocks, action figures. You said Mego blocks after I didn't want to look at Amigo dolls. It's Mego and their dolls, I mean their action figures. Ha <laughs> ha, doll boy. Raz Holly, hit the music. Shut up, dude. Dang. 